Hey everyone, thanks for joining. I am super excited to be talking with my friend Juna over at Detour Shirts, and I want him to just give a brief intro, and then we're going to talk about 10 tips for prepping your t-shirt designs and then actually selling them. So I'm super excited to dive into this content. Juna, how are you doing? For both of us, I think it's pretty early. So <laughs> tell us how you're doing and introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Hey, um, thanks for having me on the show. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Juna. Um, I run a t-shirt shop called Detour Shirts. I have a YouTube channel. Um, I've been doing print on demand since, in 2000, since 2005. Uh, when I started Cafe Press, um, and then I've, over the years, just have done more and more print-on-demand stuff. Um, I'm on currently on ten different uh, print-on-demand shops. Um, the one that I love the most that I you probably seen if you seen my videos, I talk about merch by Amazon. Um, but I'm I'm on a bunch of them: Redbubble, Tee Public, and um, all of those. Um, love print-on-demand. I, I do it as a side hustle. I still have a nine-to-five job. Um, but print on demand is uh, something I love to do and I've been doing it for a while and it's just it's great It's one of those hobbies that you love that also brings in money. So I, I yes Absolutely. Yeah, and and we at Kittle, you know, of course we have tons of t-shirt templates We want to keep adding them. You're even making templates for us, which is yeah. absolutely amazing great. Yeah, and so coming on to talk about uh, you know ha thinking of someone come on talk about t-shirt designs you know who else than a master t-shirt designer to to give us to lay your wisdom on us of these top 10 tips <laughs> um and yeah i i've been i've been showing kittle on my on my site uh i think i have three or four videos now with kittle on it and people just love it and no wonder right because it's uh, it's amazing there's nothing else like it um so yeah, I'm happy to happy to help. So yeah, let's let's dive in. So we have these ten tips that are divided, right? So we have five that are more about uh, the design process, and then we have five that are more actionable about uh, selling and prepping and the kind of technical side. So let's get into your first tip. So so what do you have for us in the prep side of things? So there's five tips. I mean, there's lots of them, but I think the the top five have had to pick top five I think the first one would um and this one a lot of people miss when they first start doing t-shirt design is they they don't even know what size to make or what shape to make the t-shirt and uh, design and and I say I always tell and, and you can break these rules right these are not hard and fast rules but if you're a beginner I would say start with a tall rectangle a lot of people just put words or graphics and they, you have it all scattered around the place and I would say, you know, start with a tall rectangle. That's the shape of your shirt anyway, is it's a tall rectangle. So you want to fill that space. And when you're selling on print on demand, um, the more that you can fill that space, I think people will gravitate towards it as well. And it just, it just looks like it fits on a t-shirt anyway. So that's yeah. tip number one is to make it a tall rectangle. Yeah. And I actually, I, I, I have, um, I have Kittle pulled up just an example yeah. Yeah. Um, because most yeah. of them are tall rectangles because you know that's the space now like i said it doesn't have to be like you can see some on there that aren't but for the most part if you're a beginner you know you're going to want to keep to that tall rectangle just to um, make sure but of course there's always there's always um this aren't hard and fast rules you can break them but yeah like this one is a more of a circle like oh, a, a, circle, yeah. yeah like a badge tall rectangle is because sometimes you don't know where like when you're brand new to t-shirt design sometimes you just make it really thin you know you think you're doing a good job and it's just hard to see and you do yeah. see some of those but you know most of the times when it's thin like that it's mainly just a word or some kind of branding but if you want right. to do something and the the tall rectangle actually will stand out because you're competing now against when you're online unless you have your own shop uh, if you're on Redbubble, you're competing with all the other ones right and so the tall rectangle is your best chance of filling that space to get more eyes on it so yeah absolutely and i think another thing i've seen um is you know i think sometimes depending on the design it may be a little bit too too high up to the whatever because like when i was starting to do cricket stuff you know i was printing uh you know just doing like my heat press or whatever and it was like i was like that looks about right and then it's like the design starts like right here and it's just yeah. like it's too it's too weird yeah. <laughs> So placement is, is key to like, 
and th and that's why another one is for tall rectangles because sometimes if you don't do the tall rectangle then then you start messing with placement and then you know yeah you, it has to be right at the chest right if it's it's not a tall rectangle if it's like a circle then it should be right on the chest so exactly. make sure it's not too high but you know right there, so yeah and one one just one follow-up question i have for this is i've noticed that on some pods i don't know if you've experienced this some maybe more on the back end like ones that kind of automate like printful they really um i don't know if limit is the right word but they really kind of hone down the space so it is that they do give you a rectangle grid mm -hmm. but do you have you ever experienced anything like oh, i kind of wish this design would would go like further down yeah. the back of the shirt and do you have a pod that you recommend that does that like better I... I i've seen that happen before and so most of the time and now uh, amazon is doing it too where you can they give you the space and then you can kind of shrink it in yeah okay yeah. um so um before on amazon you would have to like get the placement exactly right because you you have to fit that spot but uh i think now um now that amazon has changed it now you can you can make your size big and then kind of just shrink it in and make sure that you're inside that square and Great. some of them are smaller than others like printful i think has a it's like pretty a smaller small. space yeah. yeah okay great so let's move on to the second tip so we just talked okay. about the second one's related to the first one now that you have your tall rectangle just kind of fill in those spaces i think a lot of new time designers will be you know i got my text here my graphic here but then you got a lot of white space on the side or or stuff um i'm just this is these are like tips for new designers right so if you're going to make it a tall rectangle make sure you kind of fill in those spaces as well just just to fill it in just yeah and, and, and you yeah. see that on the kittle ones too you see how they kind of filled in some of the spaces so. yeah yeah we can we can look at those real quick again i think we also did a video today that's coming out here very soon on um it's it's not about t-shirt design it's more about uh vintage typography but we do have we talk about filling the overall space right uh -huh. so in this one for example right. it's pretty easy to see that if i draw a rectangle around this you know it's pretty full right trade and it's mark really, are on the yeah, side be totally full but you you know you don't want so much white space exactly yeah 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 unless yeah if you're doing a shirt that's like like you kind of mentioned like a logo script or something that's just the the logo yeah, obviously there's going to be different. yeah um yeah that's absolutely important i think that um making it too bland is not going to be able to compete with like you said when you are on these marketplaces i think they're yeah they're like print on demand marketplaces um yeah. you search something a key phrase a keyword to get something yeah. And then if yours is exactly, and, you know, you, you're competing with the, whatever else is on there too. So excellent. Okay. So tip two is fill the spaces. So what about tip three? Tip three is um, to create some interest. So of course, like we said, we're competing with other people. Um, if yours is just pretty plain, but the other one has some kind of interest that it's grabbing someone's attention, of course, people are going to gravitate towards that. So you're going to want to think of what kind of interest um, you're going to want to put in there, either it's a word or maybe it's a star, maybe it's a burst, maybe it's a pop of color, maybe, you know, it's something that can get someone's eye on it, on looking at yours instead of somebody else's, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so, and what, and what would you like when you go to uh, a POD, like when you're thinking about the design, I'm assuming that, you know, like any good researcher, you're probably already typing in that design style so that you can say you can look at the top above the fold right the 20 or 30 and uh -huh. then you can say like hmm, okay there's like three that are really standing out yeah, right yeah, yeah. yeah and that's another thing i would just, you know study your competition out there so if you go if you're doing a a phrase for example that's maybe a little popular uh, and you look on there and there's already a, a ton of things out there but maybe most of them are text Maybe yours to create interest, you're putting a graphic in there, right? Or yeah. Maybe in yours, you're putting maybe all the ones on there are you know black and white, and so your your way to create interest is maybe um, to make more color, or maybe make a letter bigger, or, or you know something different that's not already out there, so the, your stands out. Yeah, and and you have a, I believe you have a video on this. I just watched the other day. I'm I'm definitely going to link it in the description because you you brought up 
I think it was on Redbubble, you, you brought up this phrase or whatever, and you like circled, you were like, you said something like, no offense if this is yours, but like this one is not going to get as seen as this one, right? They're like, right. you know, five of them were like dark charcoal gray, and there was one nice like light gray, one that was like filling the space. And so that's a really, basically you're demonstrating what you said. Um, and so, yeah, it's absolutely important to look at the competition and see like, wow, out of these top five, my eye really comes to this one as opposed to this one that's a little not boring but it's just maybe not as peaking right when you're walking down the street wearing a shirt no one's gonna stop and be like whoa yeah, <laughs> yeah that's exactly right yeah so that's kind of kind of why people wear t-shirts in the first place right because they want people to look at it and kind of express themselves and things like that so yeah absolutely so that was tip three create some interest Tip four, I'm obviously very interested in. We at Kittle are always making more of these. So talk to us about fonts on t-shirts for a yeah. second. So a lot of times new designers, again, these are tips for new designers, but a lot of times new designers, you know, just throw up all kinds of like, this font is really cool. And then this one. And yeah. so they have like maybe four lines of text and each line has a different Different font. Yes, that is that does create interest, but it, it creates almost too much interest. So keep it simple um, with your fonts. Um, you want maybe the other things to stand out, but uh, I would I would limit my fonts to two, one or two fonts, right? Yeah. So just make it easy to read, and you want the fonts that are easy to read too. So a lot of times it doesn't translate. Like we see, I, I know there's a lot of fancy fonts out there, a lot of cool fonts out there, but it, the fonts that you want to put on t-shirts are fonts that are easy to read. So if the reason why you're putting words on a shirt is so that they can read it. Uh, so make sure that they're big, bold, easy to read. They can be cursive, but they should be bold cursive if right. you're putting cursive stuff on there. Yeah. Yeah. And I just brought up just maybe visually, oh, I, I, I brought up Redbubble. It's just, I really like their interface. <laughs> um, yeah. But like... I just bought in, you know, cat shirt because I'm I have a ca I have a cat. Um, so like this one, you know, like that's really easy to see, right? It's like one font, yeah. There's there's not a ton of mixing there, but as we go down here, there was one that caught my eye, which was this one, and they're just using differences in size, right? They're just the same font but different size, and that's one way to create interest. Again is to to make some of the words bigger some of the words smaller right and this is also using i think you have this kind of sandwich rule right where it's like yeah, yeah. a line and then like you have the graphic and then you have a, another line yeah yeah that, these are these are really great and you'll see these commonly like it almost looks like a label almost right yeah it's following all the rules actually so we it's tall rectangle it's creating interest with the graphic right <laughs> coffee cup and, and the words there's some that are bigger and smaller um they limit to two um and it's easy to understand so yeah and it's and it's looking pretty good across oh that one's not that one wouldn't work yeah. that much red bubble is tough because you can't really pick um, the colors you want not like merch by amazon where you can you know pick Take 10 off. colors that look great red bubble is just like here uh put on Beautiful your design colors. and people pick the right color and we yeah. don't limit the colors so and I actually, and it is what it is on Redbubble. I, I think I had made a, a mis like, I don't know if it's so much a mistake, but when I, um, I, I started Redbubble and I like saw that I was like, oh, that's weird. And so like I uploaded the same design, but in like black. So I did one in white and one in black so that like, I guess if somebody wanted the outline in black on yellow, it would work, you know, because yeah. if the yellow kind of fades back in here to the background. Yeah, that's but you have to do on Redbubble if you have if you have something that looks good on a light version and then maybe do the other one that looks good on a dark version if you have both, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Typically the dark t-shirts sell better, but not not all the time. There's you, you'll see on their bestseller sometimes it's a light shirt, sometimes it's a dark shirt. So yeah, and I think like just for me, I, I don't have a lot of white shirts and. Uh -huh. I think that's just because they're going to get dirty and I kind of know yeah, they're going to get dirty. So the other reason it is stands out, right? It's like a, yeah. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Like it's your canvas is darker, right? So whatever's on it is naturally going to be a little bit more sweet. Okay. So I like that tip. Um, of course, limit to two fonts. That's, 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 that's for beginners. Like if you're a master designer, this is these yeah. are hard and fast rules. There's some people that can get away with it and know, really good design and can do it but i for the most part you're gonna you know save some headache just yeah 
Absolutely. And this kind of that, that rule kind of translates again for beginners, even for ma the masters know I this. It, I use it too. Yeah. I've been doing t-shirts for a while and then like most of the time I use just two fonts anyway. So yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So we've gone through the, f we've gone through four tips so far for kind of the, the research and designing. Um, so what about tip five? Tip five is just to keep it simple. So um, you don't want to get too complicated with the t-shirt. T-shirt is, think of the t-shirt as like a walking billboard. When you're, when you're driving down the highway and you see a billboard, you want to be able to, you know, catch that message really quick. Right. Um, that's basically what's happening with a t-shirt, right? You're walking past people and people need to see, want to see the t-shirt and kind of get the information really quickly. And so it's got to keep it easy to understand, like within three seconds. So you saw that one that we just saw with the cat with the coffee, even if you didn't read it, you would get it real quick with the, I mean, you see the cat with the coffee and like, what is that? And so you, you want to get that interest first, simple, and then you can make it a little more complicated after, but for the most part, it, there has to be some kind of simple um, message right away. Yeah. Like when I look at these two right here, this white one, and then I mean, this is probably, yeah, this is by the same person. But if I were to put these two together, I already, from a glance, don't really know what's happening. Don't know what that is, yeah. I don't know what's happening here. So then I have to, even if I want to click on it, I still am not really sure. Oh, it's okay. Reading books. Yeah. That's just yeah. tough. That looks like, I think, an image almost. Uh, like yeah, a, a cat with a book. It's funny, but you almost have to zoom in. And, and uh, so it has to be big and easy because, again, you're competing with everybody on the screen. And so if they get yours right away, yours is standing out and they get it like, oh, so that makes me want to click it and then learn more, right? So yeah, absolutely. I think that's extremely important, um, even across branding, right? Even across like what, whatever your shirt is, if you're ha if you're a surf company, you know, don't don't just make it a billboard of tons of text, you know, it needs to be interesting and simple to understand surfboard waves, whatever. Um, it's absolutely, we don't want to get too crazy with it. Um, otherwise uh, nobody's going to click on it. Right. Correct. Yeah. And less like they're less likely to click on it. Right. Yeah. With all the competition out there. Absolutely. Um, okay. So that, that was, that was our kind of design tips, uh, right? The five, five design tips. tips. Yeah. So we have make it, uh, a, the final design, a rectangle. Cause we want to fill that space of the shirt. Um, tip two, fill the space. So in that rectangle, we don't want to just put like a, a tiny little star or something. We want to like make sure that the space is, is filled correctly. Uh, we want to create interest. So we don't want super boring or, or lame designs. You know, there are some that are funny that are just, you know, just text, like talk to me tomorrow or after coffee or whatever. Those can be cute. You can play around with that. Even if it's just text, you still want to make, maybe make some words bigger or something that you can still create interest with just text, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and kind of going into tip four, limit to two fonts. So you can create interest really well with different font sizes or just two fonts that play really nice together. And then we just went through the last tip, which is to keep it simple. Make sure you can be understood. Yeah, over complicated with it. There, a lot of new designers are like, I'm going to put this in and this and this in, and then it's this, this collage of graphics that don't make sense. And, you know, it's, it's too much. So, yeah, absolutely. So let's move into the next five tips, which are actually more, I think they're more tactical, more practical about the selling process. So now we've got, now we followed Juna's master tips. We've got this stellar design, or maybe we used Kittle or a template in Kittle. These for, do the seller tips first. Do the seller tips first. Oh, okay. Okay. So we need to do, we need to go, we need to reverse it a little bit. Okay. So, well, th this is important then. So what is your first tip in uh, the back end research? The back end, before you design anything, you want to do the research to make sure it's something people actually want to buy, right? Yes. I think a lot of new designers like, oh, I got so many ideas. And this is what I did in the beginning too. In 2005 is like, I don't know. I don't know what people want to buy. I'll just throw in this. I, I told the story on one another interview. Like my first, one of my first shirts was, I didn't know what to do. So I, I scanned a ramen, you know, a package of ramen. I opened it up and scanned it and <laughs> yeah. I put it on a t-shirt and I'm like, no, it was okay. But it wasn't like, I didn't do the research and actually figure out if people actually wanted to wear a right. t-shirt okay. with ramen on it. Right. So go out there. You, we have so many ways to find this now. So many apps out there. 
you can just look on Amazon if you want and, you know, type in a shirt, type in funny shirt. What do people actually want to buy? Or say you want to make a cat t-shirt like you saw there and like do some research. What kinds of cat t-shirts do people want to buy? They're probably funny. What should they be doing? That kind of thing. So do a little bit more research. You're going to have to kind of niche down because if you just do funny t-shirt, I mean, a lot of people love funny t-shirts. So kind of niche down what kind of funny t-shirt. Is it a certain hobby that you want to do? So is it a a funny outdoor t-shirt or is it a funny outdoor hiking t-shirt or you know and so kind of figure out what that audience wants and and create something amazing for it and use those design tips and create something good that they want to wear yeah and and just speaking on the the research do you have i know you mentioned amazon which absolutely uh you type something in you're gonna get search results it'll probably even auto complete do you have any other tools that you would recommend um, without uh, getting I mean, too fancy starting out i would say the free ones are ds amazon quick view you can do a chrome plugin if you're using the, the chrome app to your browser um, you can see the bsrs for amazon so you can kind of judge from there like what's really selling um, there's other apps out there if you're doing um, merch by amazon stuff you can do um, pretty merch and merch informer um, merch informer has some some good stuff on there um, Let's see what else I, I would just search on. And, and there's a bunch of Redbubble ones, too, if you're doing Redbubble. So it depends on what print on demand site you're doing. I would I would say search on the print on demand site that you're selling on. Right. Because everyone's a little bit different. Each one has their own kind of audience. Redbubble, for example, typically um, more people like the artistry of it, the, you know, the design part of it. So you have to kind of tweak your designs to make it more more artsy. Yeah. Or more something like an artist would draw and things like that. Whereas Merch by Amazon, uh, their audience is a little different, slightly different. They're kind of more like the Walmart shopper where, you know, big and bold and, and those kind of things. Yeah, more simple stuff. So, yeah, do your research on the pod site that you're selling. If you're just doing your own uh, Shopify or um, WooCommerce or whatever, uh, your own site and you're not competing with other people you still need to find like an audience that you can serve right so are you are, is are your designs geared towards maybe kawaii stuff or all coffee or is it for moms or so yes yeah. so you, i would do research you can even do research outside like i i like going to like target is free right or or whatever store that you find t-shirts in the mall is great there's a lot of t-shirt shops like hot topic and box lunch and and things like that so Depending on what style you can do and and what audience you want to serve, then do the do the research for that. Yeah, and and you can go and see like out of all the stacks, this stack yeah. only has one shirt left, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. one's pretty popular. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing more annoying than than like being in Walmart and like finally finding. You know, they have a little preview, like the little box that shows you like what the shirt looks and you you're like oh my gosh that's awesome like if it's a anime shirt that you like or something and and then you like twist it to look at it and it's gone and you're like of course it's gone because i like that one <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so it's popular yeah so yeah find an audience and do the research and, and figure out that and this takes a little time you know um to to figure out what they want you kind of get a get in the mindset of of that audience so if I was, if I were uh, an anime lover, for example, what kinds of things would I buy? If I were uh, a mom who has three dogs, what kind of uh, t-shirt would I wear? That kind yeah, of yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, sweet. Okay, so of course we need to do our research before we ever, yeah, before we even start looking at designs. We want to make sure that it's popular. Yeah. It's we're doing the right thing. The best design out there best t-shirt design but if there's no audience for it you probably won't get any sales and that that's what happened to me in the beginning like i was making like this is cool i'll just put it up and then no sales right and like oh yeah. well it is a cool design but you know nobody actually wants to buy buy it so you could have it, it they both have to work right you, so you have to have the audience that wants to buy it then you design something for the audience that will buy it yes absolutely so that I think I think tip two kind of feeds into that. So once you've done that, you're having a, a design, you're getting ready to list it. 
what's your what's your second tip yeah so the next one is so now that you've done the research and stuff make sure you use the right keywords that people can actually find your design right so and it needs to match so if you're doing a cat t-shirt of course the, some of the keywords in your title should have cat whatever right. the cat's doing so the one that we saw before cat with coffee right so make sure the cat drinking coffee or funny cat drinking coffee if there isn't a dog in it don't put dog in there just to get people to look at it because yeah that's yeah it, you're gonna show up on all the dog sites and then there's a cat and then you know no nope, they're not looking for cat they're looking for dog so make sure it's relevant um to your to your design you can describe the design and in fact that works really well so if you have a design that's you know cat drinking coffee angry cat drinking coffee make sure that maybe that's the title right because that's what people are looking for they're looking for a uh, when they look, type in angry cat drinking coffee t-shirt, they right. should show up because that's, that's what you put in the keywords. So. Absolutely. And so, and, and there's a little bit more, you know, not, not that we're going to get too technical, but there's, you, you're doing that. You need to make sure that your title is, is really nice, but then these PODs also have opportunities for you to write a description and they, they might say something like tell a story about your design. And so that's another place where you can put those keywords and then most of them I, I think most of them will give you the opportunity to put tags in and i know we will put tags on there you can actually put those those keywords as tags so um redbubble does it merch by amazon doesn't really do it in fact really? merch by amazon wants you to make them sentences so don't just put you know word yeah. comma word comma word comma they should be you know this is a design of a cat drinking coffee not just cat coffee you know like that so okay okay yeah and and i was i think i was watching some other videos about pod tagging and it's just really important to not uh to not fall in the trap of that you know you're doing a tag that says cat shirt coffee right you need you need a little you want those of course right but you yeah, also yeah, want more eggs then yes let's put those in because there are some that actually want you to do that but if yeah. it's if you're in a description or or doing bullet points or something like that then yeah make them right and then and then so you want those as tags but then you also want to get a little bit more uh narrowed right so you want like angry cat for example yeah, in this yeah. in this yeah. other shirt or like you know whatever love reading books or something you want to get a little bit more than just book or cat or whatever right because you you're if you're starting out and i think this is where people get discouraged and you're like, I did all, I did all my tags, right? I did, you know, cat, I did coffee, I did like cat lover, whatever. And then my, my stuff's not being searched up. And it's like, because you're competing, right? With thousands of other people that have been in the game. So we want to be a little bit more nuanced with our, we want those big tags, but you know, I think most would say we want to get a little bit more niched so that if someone's typing in a key phrase, your, your design can come yeah. up. And especially if you have words on your shirt, like make sure to put that that whole sentence in your in your description, right? It may not fit in the title, might be right. too long for the title, but uh, you have space in the description to to write that whole thing out on on there. So, yeah, absolutely. And and I think just as a as a, as another um, tip, some of these will kind of like either show you the trends or or auto complete stuff. Like Redbubble, I think even has its own thing. Yeah, where it'll like I did one the other day and like I put in a tag and it it was like this isn't a tag <laughs> like take it off you know like it'll give you a little like color or like a rank or something and it was like this is not which is good to know so don't don't use tags that are not <laughs> right. I think tags just to get like I, I think a lot of beginners are like oh I'll put this tag in because it's very popular but if it doesn't relate to your shirt then it's not going to do you any good yeah yeah sweet okay so tip two Use the right keywords and the tags. Make sure the title's good, the description's good, and you have those supporting tags. So basically, do all the homework, fill out the whole form, right? When you're getting ready to do a shirt, don't don't put the shirt on there and then do nothing. Don't put cat shirt. Like yeah. put put design by itself is not going to sell itself. People have to find it. People have to find it. Yes. Okay. So, tip three. What do we have? So tip three is to put it on as many products as you can, um, especially you know like some of these print on demand sites have tons of products. Um, oh. Redbubble being one of them, they have tons of tons of products. Put them on as many as they look good. Like you can go and, and preview them, right? And it, it's not gonna take you that much longer to like click, like 
put this on a, a book cover or put this on a shower curtain or whatever if it looks good on on those um you never know when you're going to get a sale on a different product and i i most of the stuff that i sell are t-shirts you know and detour yeah. shirts but uh, sometimes i sell a sticker and sometimes i sell a um um cover or whatever you know whatever it is so you never know those those are nice to have um and they're probably not going to be the top sellers of your business like it's not going to overtake t-shirts but you know yeah. why not get another sale here and a, another sale there so absolutely and i think i think the key the key phrase that you said was um put it put it on as many products as it looks good on right so in redbubble for example which is a little slightly annoying it kind of defaults to everything on sort of yeah. so you you have to go and then you'll scroll down you go oh my lord that's not that does not look good like the like on a journal or something sometimes the stickers don't like you have white text and redbubble oh. doesn't put a background behind it so yeah. you won't see the letters on a sticker yeah it's it's very strange so you you kind of have to go in and tweak all of those and that's really the case on all of these 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 pod's and and you're right there are so many products where it can kind of be overwhelming some of which i would like i don't know who would want this whatever this is some things i don't even know like the magnets there's they're just constantly adding stuff coffee cups stickers journals tote bags like yeah like there's just so many different things so don't don't just upload it and default it and let it go because it's not gonna probably look good they all need tweaking right they all kind of need to be sized to the right thing like there's even laptop covers now like the thing you put your laptop in and if you leave it set just from some of those i i sold an apron an apron okay yeah oh and and um i think i, I was watching another video and somebody was saying greeting cards yeah. like I, I i don't know if redbubble has that but some of the other ones yeah, do redbubble, oh okay cards. okay yeah and so this guy was saying like when i've looked at the top uh whatever the evergreen sales are of course shirts are there stickers are there and then he was like number three is is greeting cards and people pe people don't uh people are looking for something different than they see in the store which i think makes sense some of them are just a little too quirky a little too especially if you're doing holiday stuff why not exactly father's day mother's day like that that just makes sense yeah and kittle is perfect for that because we have tons of templates for cards you can go to the yeah. cards you can go to the cards template and just pick one and edit it boom upload it to your pod you're ready to go <laughs> yeah. that's what i love about kittle is because you can there's a lot of them already out there like for new designers i even designers like myself that's been doing it for a while you look at just the quality of designs that are already out there and look like those like yeah like the time it would take yeah. to kind of come up with that idea thank you or, yeah it's already there yeah happy birthday yeah congrats there's so many like this is beautiful merry christmas or you could change yeah. it to say happy holidays and they're shaped the right size for the card yeah. too so yeah don't just I mean, you can do t-shirts. T-shirts are great, but don't forget about these. Yeah, don't forget about the other things that you have, you know, and I and I kind of was. I was like going into it, you know, like two weeks ago or whatever. I was like, yeah, let me let me just do some PODs. And I was just like, shirt, 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 shirt. And then I started watching these videos and they were like, guys, you know, you can do other stuff on print on demand, right? It doesn't have to be just shirts. Yeah. Yeah, and these these are the right shape. Some of them are great shape for um, bags and phones and you know things like that too. So. Yeah, and we even have I uh, just I just remember we have these these categories. So if you wanted yeah. just greeting, uh, this could be a really really quick way for you to to do. You yeah, a lot of cool examples of what cards could be. Like that's a perfect card right there, right? Absolutely. Yes. So. Uh, make sure it just again back to tip three so make sure that we're putting that design so if you have a you know if you have a shirt might not work as a greeting card but it could really work as a journal cover for example or a sticker um or your greeting card could also work as a magnet so you know if it's like congrats or whatever a lot of people especially for save the dates weddings they like to do magnets um so you could do that um yeah and a way to get unstuck a lot of people like I, i'm burnt out i'm doing t-shirts 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 well go design for another product and then kind of you know get your brain going in a different way and come back to t-shirts if you want so yes, yes it's great 
All right, so moving on to tip four. Um, There's a lot like tip three. Right. Um, now that you have it on every product on your print on demand site, why not join other print on demand sites and put it on those? So if you're on Redbubble, why not join T Public and join some of the other? I'm on 10 different print on demand sites currently. There's a lot more out there. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're on there, just why not? You already have the design. It's just going to take you a little more time to put it on a, another print on demand site and, and maybe get some sales there too. And so I, I have I have a couple follow up questions under this under this one. Um, one is, would you, would you say you know obviously people need to be careful about a print on demand kind of fulfillment centers versus print on demand marketplaces because. Printful and Cafe Press and stuff like that are not marketplaces. And so you have to do that extra work to list it to Etsy or something. So, I mean. Yeah, so there are. So the one I'm talking about, the 10 different print on demand sites, I'm talking about the the ones that fulfill everything, right? They, they do the printing and the shipping and the things. But yeah, if you do print on demand on your own site, like Shopify or Etsy, that's a little bit different. Um, you're going to put in a little bit more work. So you have to go through a third party like Printful or Printify or, or some, something like that to, to get it. So yeah, you so still could, you still could put it on those. It's just a little, takes a little more time and you're going to have to drive traffic to those sites. Absolutely. And, and they're, and they're great for what they are. Um, but if you're getting in, if you're just starting out, you don't even have a website, you, you yeah. you're probably looking for a marketplace like Redbubble yeah. or T public. That's what I started with. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, um, yeah. Merch by Amazon, of course. So Amazon's great if you can get in there, I would say. yeah. And, and speaking, that's my, that's my second question. Yeah. My second question is, so I, I applied like two weeks ago and I got rejected, which is always yeah. like a you get rejected now. Um, it's, it's. <laughs> yeah basically like a lottery uh, is the way I see it. And people ask me, is there any way that I can get on there and guarantee to get a spot on Merch by Amazon? Like, I, I don't think so. I think they get they get so many requests now. I I, I believe and I, I don't work for Merch by Amazon, but I'm guessing that it's more like a lottery where they just pick because I've heard a lot of designers, like top designers like yourself who designed in a, for a long time and have great designs don't get in. And some people have never designed a t-shirt in their life and, and they get in. So like, it's gotta be a lottery, right? They're not looking at, I, I don't believe they're looking at who, who has the skills or whatever. I, I really doubt that's what they're looking at. I, I believe it's just luck of the draw timing, you know, maybe try, um, try applying at the beginning of the month and that didn't work. Try at the end of the month or, or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. But. Yeah. And, and it's, it's interesting. Cause I, I was like, I was so sure. And, and this is the one we want to be on. Right. So if you're, if you're, if you're watching, don't, don't get discouraged. Uh, you know, don't get discouraged because if you're watching, we, we want you to be on merch by Amazon because it is a truly amazing. And I, I did go kind of dive into a bunch of videos where people were talking about like, ah, oh, so you got rejected. And they kind of do lay out a couple things. The first being, it would be a really good idea to try to be on three or four before so that you can provide links to the other, uh, to your other POD. So Amazon sees that you're listing things. Now, I hadn't done that. I had just shared all of my links to my personal website. And like you said, it could be a lottery. They couldn't have even looked at it. But let's say somebody did. They might have thought, ah, oh, this guy, I don't know what he's doing. He's got a personal website. He's not on any print on demand. You just never know. So I would I would cover all your bases, right? And 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 try to list some products on these other uh, PODs. Maybe try to get a sale, like a sticker or something. And then, and then go back to Merch by Amazon. Yeah, and it's a great test too. So if you haven't done print on demand before, starting with something like Redbubble or TeePublic, and trying out things, you know, uh, they don't have limits like Merch by Amazon. When you first start out, you can only do 10. I believe right from the get go on Redbubble, you can upload 60 a day. So you can really try out like what works and what doesn't kind of try out the, the design tips that we talked about and all these tips and, you know, kind of learn from there. I know there's a slightly different audience, like I said, but at least you can kind of get the idea of uploading and researching and, and those kinds of things so yeah absolutely and and that's another key thing right is 
no, is no kind of the audience for each one. Redbubble was really interested in artistic work. Displate, for example, is 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 they're looking for more like really premium, refined stuff. They're usually printing it on really nice, high quality prints. Merch by Amazon, of course, is more global. T Public is more of that kind of that natural, high graphic T-shirt. You know, that's yeah. what people are looking for. Really more pop culture thing. I think when I think uh, T Public. They're really geared towards that kind of stuff, like uh, kind of similar to Redbubble, but just slightly different, more geared towards pop culture, still artsy kind of thing. But yeah. yeah, absolutely. So now we're on to our last tip. So oh. after we have listed on as many <laughs> PODs as possible, as many as we can get into, what sh what's our fifth tip? So my fifth tip is to share your work, like get it out there, like... Um, there's lots of different ways. If you're on social media, maybe start an Instagram. I, I would say uh, one of the things that a lot of new designers do when they get into print on demand is like, oh, all right, I'll share it on print on demand. And their full Instagram is just all pictures of their t-shirts. Now, I wouldn't do that. I would, I would kind of hone in. So if you're, for example, if you figured out that you want to do the, the mommy niche or maybe the cat niche, let's do cats because it's okay. real simple because we show cats. So what I would do is I would start a cat Instagram for people who love cats. Now, people who love cats don't just want to see t-shirt, um, cat t-shirts, right? They want right. to like maybe nice pictures of cats, maybe some funny story about cats, maybe something interesting yeah. about cats. Make your Instagram about, about that, what people who love cats would want to see and come back and like come and look at your stuff. And then every once in a while, put on your put your t-shirts in there you know so right. it's not just a t-shirt instagram because those typically typically don't do really well unless you're a brand unless you're disney or, right. or somebody that has a lot of following anyway people aren't going to go to um instagram to go look at your t-shirt stuff right they go to instagram to to look up stuff that they love yeah and, absolutely yeah and then if then if your stuff comes up in your feed but they have to follow you first right right <laughs> They, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to follow an Instagram profile that's just full of t-shirts that they don't want to see anymore. It gets annoying after a while. Yeah. So make sure yeah. you're providing value on social media. Uh, it, it is a long road um, on social media, but you can do it. You're going to have to, you know, post every day, post something interesting. And then every once in a while, hey, guess what? I did this t-shirt. Maybe you're, maybe you're a designer and you can post about um, how you design or, or things like that. Those work well too. Yeah. Instead of just selling your stuff, you can say, this is how I drew this, or this is like kind of that, that route would work as well. But it just posting t-shirts one after another, after a while, you know, if, if someone like goes on there and sees just t-shirt after t-shirt after t-shirt, they're like unfollow. Right. So yeah. make sure that you're providing some value on social media first and then, then share it. Yeah, absolutely. And and I would even say don't discredit like your personal like Facebook, for example, because yeah. if you post be following you yeah. and, and have a connection with you already, right? That's yeah. great. Now you can post a t-shirt because they, you have followers. But if yeah. you're just starting off with zero. Yeah. And even family, like family that's following you or friends that are following you on Facebook. One, they probably didn't even know you started POD. And two, yeah. if they're the same age as you, or if their family that likes the same topic, you know, I, I've had this happen before. They kind of come out of nowhere and they're like, I got to have this, this yeah. shirt or whatever. And well, that's what you want. Too, right? Exactly. And that, and that's what you want. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Something like that. Or can you, yeah. Add this little detail or something. Yeah. So you never know. Um, it like, you know, use your, 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 your arsenal, your, your family, your friends. You never know. I have, I have several friends that will come out of nowhere when they see something and because it's they're interested in it and it's good for me because then i know okay my age my audience i think they kind of like this then i can take that knowledge go back to my print on demand right so absolutely if you already have people following you if you have a personal um twitter personal facebook instagram whatever it is i yeah that's perfect because you already have people who are interested in you and then you know again absolutely. i would i would put it sparse um and don't put it now that you started a print on demand shop your instagram account shouldn't just be t-shirts now right so yeah. it's like put it every once in a while but yeah those are those are great absolutely and so 
we're at the end of those top uh, those those five tips. So to recap, we have we need to do our research, right? We need to make sure that people are searching for this topic. We want to know what people like. Of course, do what feels feels right. You know, we want you to make what you want to make, but make sure it's you know trending or people want to do it. Style yourself, or you know something that's personal to you. Just make sure that you know maybe get do some research on ideas on what what people that like those things like yeah perfect. absolutely and tip two obviously goes from the first one use the right keywords fill out the whole form fill out the whole page tell your story explain your design put it on as, as many products as it looks good don't just go crazy and set it to default make sure they look good on a journal if it doesn't fit turn it off if it looks good on a sticker put it on a sticker um, we want to use as many PODs as possible. I think this might be a fear for some people. I was kind of thinking like, oh, they all compete with each other. Don't do it. But actually, I think it's okay, right? You want to put it as, as many PODs as you want. And then after you've done that, uh, make sure you're sharing it. So if you don't talk about it, it probably won't get seen, right? So you want to talk about it to make sure that it's just another way for your stuff to get seen. Hopefully, you know, you use the right keywords and and right stuff so in the marketplace it'll, it'll pop up but why not share it as well absolutely well juna thank you so much for these top 10 tips for getting into it's really getting into selling t-shirts on print on demand i think this is going to be super helpful especially for people that are just discovering or have been using kittle or any other maybe you're using anything else we'd love for you to use kittle but these tips are going to help you uh, go from zero to you know having a pod which is really valuable so Thank you so much for taking this time to to, to interview with me. And uh, is there anything that you would like to say? Of course, I'm going to link all of your stuff in the description. Please go follow uh, Juno. Go follow him on social. Go follow his YouTube. He's got massive tips, massive knowledge. But is there anything that you want to say before we sign off here? Oh, wow. Um, just thanks, man. Thanks for having me on this. The kiddo's been great. Um, I, I, I'm going to continue to use it. I got lots more stuff on there There's, and you guys are improving all the time. So that, I love seeing all the all the new stuff um, that you have on there. I'm just starting to I'm trying out the the new color palette. Stuff yes, that added. that's pretty cool. I'm um, so excited to see what you guys have in store. I'm sure that I'm sure you guys have a, a lot of cool stuff okay. coming it's up. So. Awesome. Well, thank you again. And you have a great day. Everybody watching, having a great day and we will see you next time.